Hey guys, AD from the Explorographer.com here, and today I want to show you how to make a plotograph online, these cool animated still photos, uh, just using your browser right from the web. All right, so you're going to need to go to plotographs.com and you're going to need to sign up for an account there. Once you do, you're actually going to be able to create some of these plotographs for free. And what's really cool about this website is that it will actually give you more features the more you connect with other people socially on the site. So that's kind of cool. I'm just a basic guy here. I don't have a lot of followers or anything like that. So, um, follow me. That would be great um, and help me out. Um, but I'll keep making these tutorials as features become available. So once you've got an account, you're going to go ahead and want to create a plotograph. Now you can upload a loop if you want to, if you've created something on the iPad um, and you download it and it has to be 10 seconds or less. Um, I find that the, um, the three second versions for Instagram work really well uh, for uploading. It seems like when I save them from uh, the iPad app, it saves them as 11 seconds rather than 10, even though it says 10 on the app. Uh, and they don't they don't transfer over it'll refuse to take it so i'm going to create one though here on the website just to show you that you don't really need an ipad or anything so i'm going to go ahead and select create plotograph now i need to basically upload a file here so i'm going to go ahead and do that right from my uh, computer all right i've gone ahead and given it a name Loaded in a, a file here. I don't, I'm not using large files. I think this is uh, 2560 pixels long edge. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, load that up and click create. All right, there we go. So the controls for Plotograph are pretty cool. Some of these things will unlock later as you get more people to join your social network, like I said. Um, but we're just going to start with basic um, anchoring and animation. So in this particular image, I want to animate the sky first, and then I want to do something a little bit with the water. Um, so let's start with the sky. So I want to move the clouds, but I don't want the mountains to move. So if I put an animation point in here, and we're just going to put it straight across. Now, one thing I will tell you about the animation points is that the longer they are, the faster things move. It's not how far they move, but it's the faster things move. So let me go ahead and uh, we're going to delete some points here. Let's just delete that point. There we go. Um, and I don't think I can move things around. I'm still trying to figure out. It says click and drag is on. Let's just try uh, direct selection tool. Let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So let's do a long one first and you can see what happens. Now this is really going to, it's going to move the whole photo. So let's just watch this and you'll see it. Takes a second to calculate it and then it'll show you. Now, see, how, that's a little trippy. Moving the whole photo. So, I'm not going to play that very long because that's dizzying. If I was to make this arrow short, you'll see that you still get a lot of animation, but it's, uh, it's slower. So, watch. So, there we have a much slower, smoother animation. So, a long arrow gives you fast animation. Smooth, uh, small arrow gives you a slower animation. And this is good for like, uh, if you want to start out with a, uh, a, a slow animation and then slowly and gradually build to a faster animation, you can see how we can control that now. The, or again, this is going to move the whole screen. I'll show you how. To, so you can see it's slower on this side than faster. Or you could have the clouds rush in with a long arrow and then slow down as they get in here. All right. Now we need to, we have a particular problem here we need to solve, which is how do we stop all this other stuff from moving around? And that's with stabilizer points on the app. They're called anchor points, but here they're called stabilizers. So you can see that we have a little bit of a dot that appears uh, next to our cursor. We're going to go ahead and uh, zoom in a little bit here. Let's zoom in. Doop, doop, doop. And I think, uh, Oops, that's the space bar does play <laughs> and we can move around. So we're going to put some stabilizer points in. So we're going to start here and I'm just going to trace along this top of this mountain. And we'll do this quickly and you can see it when I'm done. 
Okay, so I've got all my stabilizer points in. One thing to take note is that on the online app, if you need to move a stabilizer point, this one's a little too low. My only option here is to actually delete the point and then put it back down. It doesn't allow you like on the app to move things around. I'm sure that's probably something coming. So let's just look at what this looks at like now uh, with the stabilizer points down and the hills uh, stopped from moving. So there you go. You can see that now just the clouds are moving. We got a little bit of animation blur here in the hills. Means I need more anchor or stabilization points there. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. And we're going to get rid of these big long lines because we want this to be smooth. So I'm just going through and using the selection tool to delete. Click on the arrow to delete it. We're going to do something more with that in just a second. Let's put the rest of our stabilizer points in. We'll add some here. Sometimes you need to make sure that you're just outside the edge of what you don't want blurred. So there we go. That one looks a little low there, but I think it'll be okay. All right, let's do some animation. So on uh, these clouds, I think it would be cool if they were kind of, I don't know, going this way with the, with the movement of uh, the, the actual photo itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and move those in line with the way that they're moving. And let's take a look at that. Now I use three shorter arrows here um, because I want the animation to be smooth. And there we go, that's looking much better. So we don't have any movement over here. I need to go ahead and take care of that. Everything coming in here looks pretty good. The little clouds up here look good. So let's just put one more arrow right here to move these clouds off the edge. Now this one's kind of moving upwards. So I think I want to I think I want to move that. Let's um, let's move this one up. Oops. So yeah, this is the other thing. You can't move the base either. Uh, in the app, you can actually move all these around. If you have an iPad, the, the app is seems to be just more intuitive to me right now. Uh, so the only way that I can get rid of this is to delete it and then add a new point. So I can't move that uh, base structure at all. So I want to keep them again very short. There we go. Well, let's take a look at that. There we go. All right, so we've got some nice cloud movement there in the sky. Now I wanna do the water. So here to move the water again, we need to put down stabilizer points across the base here of the, uh, so the bottom of the mountain doesn't move. If I was just to put in animation pointing down, basically the bottom of the mountain would be dragged across the screen. We don't want that. So we need to stabilize the photo here on the bottom. You can put in as many of these stabilizer points, by the way, as you want. Um, I have not quite figured out yet how few of them you can use. Although when I really space them out, usually something will drag into the photo that I don't want. So, um, and if you have a Wacom tablet or something uh, of, a, of a, some sort of tablet that you can draw with, it's much easier to tap these points using uh, that device. I'm using a mouse right now, which is kind of tedious. Um, Luckily, there's a payoff at the end, right? So do that. I'm, I have to apologize too. If you guys hear like a noise in the background, my 3D printer is printing something right now. All right, so I've got the um, I've got the bottom of the everything anchored, but I'm going to have a problem with these rocks. So if I put in an animation, I want the water to kind of come towards us. So uh, if I put an arrow right here and just say, yeah, I would like you to kind of go down that way and you to kind of go this way, you're gonna see that the rocks are gonna move and that's not gonna look right. So we'll go ahead and animate. And so we've got this vibrating rocks thing going on, although everything else looks pretty cool. So what we need to do is we need to like, go ahead and stabilize these rocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit and move over to the rocks using the hand tool to move over. There we go. All right, now we're gonna put down more stabilizers. So here we're gonna to have to stabilize, well, let's just stabilize the rock because the reflection actually would move, right? So let's go right around the base of the rock where it meets the water. Might be able to do some cool animation in there, so we'll see. So you notice I'm being really close up with this one. These finer details, you really have to Put these stabilizer dots very close together. 
All right, and then we need to also stabilize this rock, which is in the water as well. Otherwise, that one will move around on us. We don't want space rock right now for this one. Got this errant point down here. We're going to get rid of him. Bye-bye. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's just go back to full. And, of course, i got to do all this over here, but we'll get to that. So let's go ahead and move the water now. We'll see that the, the rock here is now stabilized. It takes a little bit for the cloud to do the animation when you start adding all these points, so you just need to be patient. Okay, so there we go. So now you can see, like, not a lot of this is moving. It means I need to put in some more arrows. We don't have any movement down here below either. So we're going to go ahead and animate down there. I'm going to try to make this move a little faster. Not a lot, but a little faster than what you see up here. And you notice I'm flaring the arrows out as I come across center. That's just a 3D thing. So we want it to look like it's in 3D. So by flaring the arrows out, we change the angles of the animation, which makes it look like it's moving in 3D. So we're going to need one down here. I'm moving the ones down at the bottom. I'm making those a little longer because as water gets close to you, it would move faster because the, of the frequency of the waves. I'm probably going to need one in here. So you notice the angle here is, is less than this one, but more than this one. That's all on purpose. And I don't know as I'll need, let's just put one here, just in case, and one down here. All right, now I need to go ahead and stabilize all these rocks, which is gonna take me a little bit. I'll speed everything up so it's a little bit quicker for you guys. Whew, there we go. All right. Wow. That was a lot of dots. All right, let's see what we get now. So there we go. Um, looking pretty good. You can see that there's another rock down here I need to stabilize, but pretty much it's doing what I want it to do. Um, there's a few areas that need to be animated here. Again, this is a little bit uh, less feature rich than the, uh, the app is, I think, right now. Uh, but I'm sure that they are, they are going to be adding to it. So let's just uh, finish the stabilization and I'll show you guys how to export and get it out to your social networks. More stabilization here, right there, and put a little bit here, and one, two there, and here in case that's in the way, and around this rock. Again, I'm tracing the water line, not the actual outline of what you see because the reflections would actually move. So, all right, let's take one last look here. To finish it off, I probably would put a bunch more animation arrows just so that it was moving everywhere. But I think I'm just going to go with this for now. Um, but I would probably do, you know, a little bit more uh, to this. Um, and I can, you know, you can, if you add, like, we can put an animation point up here. And we can make this one long. And you'll see that the top of this will move quicker now. Sometimes when you put long and, and short animations together, there'll be some overlapping and it won't look quite right, but this looks pretty, pretty good. All right, now that we're done, uh, we're going to go ahead at this point and we're going to come down here to our export image. So we're going to click that. And so you've got a plotograph export or a custom export. So I'm going to use the custom export. And here we can choose our frame rate. Uh, I use uh, 29 FPS. Uh, the codec is 264, which is uh, available pretty much for everybody. Uh, and the uh, quality is high, of course. And then we cannot select our animation length. Um, so right now, I think it's set to six seconds, which will give you a fairly decent sized file that looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and export that. And so that'll take some time to do. It'll generate that, uh, and then it'll uh, it'll put it over. We'll get a notification, and it'll put it over here so we can download it and look at it. And let's just look at my notifications and see if it's done. Oh, people said thank you. All right, there. Then my export's ready. Yay. Okay, once you've exported your loop, you can then download it. Uh, and upload it and then re-upload it to your social media networks or you can also post it on Plotograph Social. So let's go to Plotograph Social 
And then this is a little weird the way this works, but you'll get it once you've done it once or twice. Go ahead and hit the plus and then upload loop. So instead of choosing a file to upload here, which you could do if you wanted to, you can just click on the import from Plotograph and then that will show you all the exports that you've done. See here it needs to be less than 10 seconds, which we know this is six seconds. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that one and select import. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit next here. I'm gonna put in me. And then we're just gonna put in landscape. You know, it's just uh, basically tagging your work. All right, and there we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and share it. So that takes a little bit of time. It's, uh, it just uh, basically does the little thing there and then goes back to the main screen. And you'll get a little notification up here on your icon that says that the plotograph has been posted. Okay, once your icon lights up here, we'll go ahead and click on that. And you can see here at notifications, your loop is ready. We click on that and you can see now it's part of my gallery. So if I go to the front page of the social, it will then appear on the social page. And you can see the loop is going there. We can watch all these other loops. Here's one of my other ones. So yeah, that's how easy it is to use Plotograph. Right now it's, it's kind of an emerging uh, network. So get involved, have fun. Uh, this is so addicting to play with a still photo and make it uh, into a motion photo. It's incredible. Um, and make sure if you're out there, you follow me. I'm at The Explorographer. So if you if you want to search for me uh, on uh, Plotograph, you just punch this guy right here and type in The Explorographer, like so. And you'll find me and go ahead and add me up on your network. I'd really appreciate that. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Stay creative.